Don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. Okay, first things first, we are drawing Jack the Giant Killer for two reasons. First of all, in my video for the Scapula Giant Attack Monsters Mega Battle comment commentary, I made a reference to the two-headed giant versus octopus serpent fight that I'm drawing here today, and unfortunately I didn't have a visual aid for that, and of course that crawled under my skin and annoyed me to no end, so I knew I was going to have to draw this sooner or later. Second of all, in the previous episode, of course, we drew the dragon from one of Ray Harryhausen's classics, the seventh voyage of Sinbad, and sooner or later, when you talk about Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, you gotta talk about its cheap copycat, Jack the Giant Killer. So let's address the uh, the elephant in the room, not the stop motion Harry House and elephant from uh, 20 million miles to Earth or Valley of Guanji. So Jack the Giant Killer gets a lot of flack for being a very obvious copy of Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, and there's no denying it. There's no secret about that. There's no um. <laughs> everybody knows about the lawsuit that followed afterwards. But let's get down and dirty with the actually looking at these two films. So right off the bat, yes, the monsters from Jack the Giant Killer do not compare to Harry Housen's work. Even his lesser work is just, it's so much better than um, a lot of the creatures you see in this film. Now, don't get me wrong, the creatures are of varying quality, but unfortunately the weakest of the weak do tend to stand out and get the most criticism. For me, the weakest of all of them has got to be Cormoran, not least of all just because it's just sort of mediocrely designed and animated, but it is such a carbon copy of the Harry Housen Cyclops that it's like, guys, come on, you, you had to have known you were going to get sued for just how closely this thing is, and giving the thing two eyes instead of one it wasn't enough to keep you safe. It's such a plagiarism that there really is no way to defend it. Now, once you get past Cormoran, though, you know, there's a lot of other better monsters in this movie that are achieved with or without stop motion. The, the two-headed giant and the octopus serpent may not be as well executed, again, as Harry Housen or some other uh, stop motion animators would have done, but there's, it's still a very fun fight. It's still, the two creatures do have a bit more flair to their design and a bit more originality as compared to Cormoran. So I do think there it's a better example of what Jack the Giant Killer has to offer. Now jumping back and forth between these two films I'm comparing, I have given a lot of praise to Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, but now it's time to just admit the, the sad truth is it is not a flawless movie. The monsters are excellent, of course. The story is simple and easy to follow, but unfortunately there are a lot of flaws with it, and cheap, the two main ones being a lot of the acting is terrible, except for, of course, Kerwin Matthews and Torin Thatcher, who of course starred in both movies. They're the highlights of the acting, but a lot of the other extras and the other actors in Seventh Voyage of Sinbad range from just mediocre to downright terrible. And the other problem with it is, of course, there are long stretches in the movie where just not a hell of a lot is happening, where you really do feel like you're just waiting out the clock, biding your time until another monster shows up to liven things. That's not entirely the case with Jack the Giant Killer. Jack the Giant Killer doesn't really have the greatest acting in the world, but it doesn't really have anything nearly as embarrassingly bad as some of the extras in Seventh Voyage. They, everybody does their job and they do it well. But more importantly, the story really does keep a pretty brisk pace. There's not too much downtime. There's not too much parts where you're just kind of like waiting and waiting for something to happen. Compare the sea voyages between Seventh Voyage and uh, Jack the Giant Killer. Jack the Giant Killer has a lot more going on because Besides just the mutiny that happens in both versions, you also have the attack by the witches, which is pretty goddamn amazing work without the stop motion. And then, of course, you follow that up with finding a viking, finding a leprechaun, and just all sorts of crazy crap happens. Things keep rolling a lot faster, and while, you know, you can't really say, the again, the quality probably isn't the greatest ever, but... It, hits, it does its job and it does it well enough. And that's sort of the weird thing about comparing quality between these two films is that it tends to jump all over the chart. If you were looking at the quality as like a sort of a bar graph on Seventh Voyage, of course, the highest spikes are the excellent monsters in stop motion by Ray Harryhausen, but then the quality plummets right the hell down with a lot of the lulls of the story and a lot of the bad acting. Whereas Jack the Giant Killer, it just kind of stays mid-level throughout the entire thing. You know, mid-level monsters, mid-level acting, mid-level story, but in that regards, it's a bit more consistent in quality. Is one better than the other in that regards? That really depends on what you're into. If you do like Jack the Giant Killer, I think there's a lot of great things going for it. If you prefer Sam the Voyage of Sinbad, that is absolutely understandable, because let's face it, there's a, it's kind of hard to compete with the master. Although, give the Jack the Giant Killer crew credit for trying. You know, not everybody was up to that level, and who knows, there may have been a lot of other issues, such as, um, 
on less than adequate budget or who knows. Do I recommend Jack the Giant Killer? I do. Yeah, it's a fun movie. It does. It has no pretensions of being a, a, the biggest of Hollywood epics. I don't even think it really has the pretensions of being as good as Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. It's just a fun fantasy movie. Honestly, I think anybody who's watching this and who's familiar with both movies is probably a fan of both films. Take one or the other or watch them together on a double bill and just have yourself a good old time. Suspend your disbelief. Be a kid at heart and just enjoy a bunch of really fun, crazy monsters because that's what we're all here for and that's what we all enjoy. Thank you very much, guys. Catch you on the next voyage. Bye-bye.